Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share a design team project for top flight stamps. I use the super pretty indigo blue country house stamp, which has this beautiful doorway. And I also added a super cute little Shih Tzu dog that I colored up like my bandito from Jessica Lynn original stamps. And so this is kind of a twofer project. And I thought I would just share with you guys the whole process of how I created the card. So I took a piece of regular cardstock and I decided I was gonna try and do a little bit of water coloring. And so I used Versa Fine Black Onyx ink and I stamped it out onto this card front. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't thinking through this properly because I stamped both the Shih Tzu dog and this doorway from the country house stamp set uh, on regular cardstock rather than on Bristol or watercolor paper. So it doesn't take the liquid from the water brush too well, but I did at least think through and use the correct ink. So this is a ink that does not bleed with a lot of liquid. So at least I did that. <laughs> I stamped out the doorway first and I am just gonna use some Arteza fine, um, fine liner pens. And I'm, unfortunately these pens don't have actual color names or numbers on them. So I'm just gonna share with you guys the caps uh, over to the left and uh, I've named them various names uh, on my blog post. So if you're interested in the particular colors that I used, you can take a look at the names that I called them and hopefully from the cap lids, you'll be able to tell the colors that I used. But basically I did a really loose kind of sketchy water coloring. The fine liner pens give a nice, really detailed fine uh, sketchy line and then I just blended the colors out with a water brush. This is an Arteza water brush, the finest point out of their six uh, water brush set. And I'm just kind of loosely going in and coloring this. It looks black in the video perhaps, but it's kind of a really dark forest green and then a darker green, which reads almost like a regular plain, like Crayola color green, and then a light green. And what's interesting is on regular cardstock paper, when you brush it out or blend it out with a water brush, it actually fades the colors quite, quite a lot, at least in these green tones. You can see at the top there, that area is already faded out quite a bit. And then now on the right side, you can see that it's faded out quite a bit too. And that's just from brushing it out with a water brush, just plain water, and then waiting for it to dry. And as it dries, it lightens. For the topiaries, I decided to use another three green combination. This is a little bit lighter. I wanted it to look like spring growth on these topiaries. And so I'm starting with like a mid-tone green, then a lighter green, and then almost like a citron green, yellow green, um, and I'm blending those out. And I'm just kind of skipping over here and there. I just wanted to give you a sense of how I'm coloring everything out, uh, but I'm not like showing you the whole thing. So I showed you the left topiary, but I didn't show you the right. Now I'm going through and using a mid-tone gray uh, and then a lighter gray to color in what I was thinking would be kind of stone work. Uh, this is the bottom pediment around either side of the door and then the pots for the topiaries and I'm just blending that out together. I'm adding another layer of the light gray again, all across all four areas, just to try to blend out a little bit more. It was a little too sketchy for my liking. Now I'm gonna go through and color in the stonework on the house on either side of the door. And, you know, with a Copic marker or with other markers, it might've been more difficult to color this, but because I was going for this kind of sketchy look, getting into these tiny nooks and crannies with the spine liner pens was really easy and very fast. I mean, I sped up the video so that it's probably three times normal speed, but it blends just a little bit just because of the cardstock that I used. I think if I had used a Bristol or a watercolor paper, then it would have blended even more. 
but I kind of like the sketchy lines still being visible after the blending. And I'm just using the two tones of gray. One is a little bit warmer, one is a little bit cooler. You can tell from the lid, but they're both pretty light in the scheme of grays uh, because I didn't want it to be super, super busy. I wanted this to still look like a background area. And because the stamp doesn't kind of have an exact ending point, I am going all around even the edges of the kind of ivy, sketchy ivy that's around the doorway. Uh, I'm taking that gray a little bit beyond that. Now I'm going through and coloring up all the glass with a really pale blue slash gray, and I blended that out. And then I decided the topiary pots could use a little color. So I'm blending in a little bit of burgundy just to add just a hint of color because I wanted something to coordinate with the door, which I wanted to color in with this burgundy. I wanted a little bit of a pop of color and a lot of doors are colored, you know, with a red or a burgundy uh, down here in the south anyway. So I'm just kind of coloring in the edges, following along the lines of the stamped image. And I decided it was looking a little too pinky burgundy, so I'm going to add some brown here. This is a, just like a plain brown. And I'm coloring, using kind of a sketchy coloring uh, technique. And then I decided it was looking a little too dark, so I went back in with a kind of mustardy yellow. It's a tan or beige, you could call it. And then I'm going back in again with that burgundy just to add more color. And I'm adding layer after layer and then I've decided that's enough color so I can go in with my water brush to blend it out and I think especially that tan color blended beautifully so that more of the door looks fully colored. Now I'm going around the what I think is kind of like the arch or transom area above the doorway with that burgundy even though the stamped image doesn't have really a space to color in I thought I could just outline that area with a burgundy. And now I'm going in with vertical striped kind of coloring, just lines basically to add more color and give more of a texture to the doorway, more like wood. And I'm going also into that transom area with that brown color as well, just wanting to fill in the white of the cardstock from showing through too much. Now I'm adding more of that brown to the doorway and Adding those three colors kind of gave what I think is more of a realistic wood door look that was stained burgundy or red. And I like how this sketchy look is coming together. I decide I'm gonna add uh, more blue to the glass and that was it pretty much for the doorway. Now for the little Shih Tzu that I'm coloring up to look like my Bandito. You know, this whole card is kind of trying to capture a moment in time. Uh, it's springtime here in Georgia, and uh, although my biscuit is too old to really do a lot of walking, my bandito uh, isn't, so I take him along for walks uh, pretty regularly, and so I thought this would be a cute card to have him kind of popping out of the doorway uh, excited about a walk. And I'm just coloring up his little patches around his eyes and his ears in this brown color. Sorry, the camera's focusing on my finger rather than the image at this point. Um, but hopefully it'll come back into focus. I'm just using the brown again and then that tan golden color. And I'm going to add a light gray to the areas that are white in the image just so I can get some shadowed areas and it's not just the stark white of the cardstock and I'm trying to catch the areas that I think would be shaded. So behind it'll each patch of fur, I am adding that little bit of gray and I'm blending it out with the water brush so it softens that gray a little bit. I'm also blending out the tan areas so that that looks uh, more blended as well. And, uh, you know, that's really it. He's just this got these little patches of brown and the rest of him is white. Uh, I've decided to add the burgundy to his tongue, and I actually do a second layer of that burgundy for his tongue. Now I'm showing you the card front construction, which is basically a deconstruction. I'm taking an X-Acto blade and cutting the door, the right door in this double door uh, entry. And now I'm gonna put this card front on a scoreboard 
and I'm scoring along the side there so that this whole front, the right side of the door will be able to be opened up and the puppy can be placed behind it. And you can see me trying to figure out the positioning for him. And I actually end up uh, positioning him so that the bottom isn't showing and the back tail side isn't showing, but I have his head popping forward and I'm just gonna tape him to the back of the card. Um, just using plain scotch tape and making sure that he's securely fastened. And then I'm going to color the inside of the door so that when somebody kind of flips the right panel door open, you can see that it will look the same on the inside as well as the outside. So I'm, I'm just doodled in some uh, board lines and then I'm going to go through the same coloring process. I'm adding the burgundy, just following along the same way that I did for the door fronts. This is the inside of the same door, so I want it to look cohesive. I'm adding the brown, uh, and then I'll go through and just make sure that the white of the door isn't showing. Uh, I think off camera, I also edge the uh, door panel so that it uh, wouldn't show the white of the cardstock. And here you see me adding the golden beige color and then going back in and adding more of the brown and the burgundy. Uh, blending it out now with a water brush. Luckily, this cardstock is thick enough to handle all of that water. Now for the sentiment, I thought this really cute sentiment uh, stamp set from Neat and Tangled called Out of the Box would be perfect. Uh, I wanted the curve of the doorway to be echoed in the sentiment. So this top sentiment just says, just popping up to say, and I positioned it on my Misty tool and then I'm taking the middle portion and then curving each side, um, as you can see there, and I'm just measuring out and making sure that it's positioned where I want it and not you know, getting too close to the ivy on the door front. And that's me just stamping it out. I needed to stamp it out a couple times. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink here and to get a clean impression, crisp, I wanted to stamp it out a couple of times. And then at the bottom here, I'm stamping out the big hello exclamation point. That's also from the same neat and tangled out of the box stamp set. A couple of impressions there for that because it's a thicker font. I needed to get uh, a few impressions. And then just for a little extra, you know, reference to spring down here, there's lots of blooming flowers right now. So I used this nail art. They're like little plastic or resin flowers from a nail art kit and I'm just gluing those on top of the topiary. So the topiaries look like they're in full bloom. I love adding little details like this, especially when they, you know, get the point across that this is kind of a hello spring card. Um, and then I'm just gonna make sure I get this all onto a card front. I'm using a black card base because I wanted just something to, to have the card front pop on. And I'm using some fun foam just to add a little dimension behind the card front. I'm just using plain uh, Aileen's original tacky glue to uh, put that around uh, on the back side of that card front. You saw, um, I did it off camera, but I also cut out the little doorway area. Now you see me putting glue on the other side of the fun foam after adhering to this to the card front. And before I put that on, I wanted to add a little bit of pink vellum just where the doorway would open so that I wouldn't have black behind the puppy. I wanted it to have a little shade of color, but not be distracting with a pattern or anything. So I just added a light pink vellum. And that's my card. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful crafty day.